So how deep does the rabbit hole go in your case? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in my case, I don't know if there's any bottom to the rabbit hole. I think it just keeps going further and further. And the longer you spend in the field, the more you realize that the <laughs> who knows where the rabbit hole ends. I mean, even the greatest experts in Bitcoin seem to discover more and more about it. And um, yeah, yeah, it just keeps going, in my opinion. Yeah, I have a similar experience. I think more maybe my question was what what's the biggest insight that you discovered in in that rabbit hole that 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 like shook your world a bit. Yeah. I think someone once told me that if you don't understand Bitcoin, you don't understand money. And I think that's fundamentally true. I think a lot of people dismiss it because Fiat currency is the water that they've been swimming in their whole lives. There's this story that I really like. Um, it's sort of a parable where there's two fish that are swimming in the ocean and they pass a much older fish. And the older fish says to the two fish, how's the water, boys? And the two younger fish swim away and they say, it's good. But then they swim away and they ask, what the heck is water? <laughs> <laughs> so the whole metaphor being that the fish, even though water is what they've been swimming and living in their whole lives, uh, they still don't really know what water is. They can't grasp it. They're too close to it. I think there's a good metaphor there for fiat currency and the U.S. dollar system, uh, because people take for granted that you know we have the U.S. dollar or whatever fiat currency you use, depending on what country you live in, and people just accept that that is money. And they don't consider that there are superior forms of money out there, uh, Bitcoin, in my opinion, being foremost among them. Uh, obviously, Bitcoin needs to scale. And there's still some obstacles before it can become a medium of exchange, unit of account and store value and all those uh, properties that make money what it is today. But I, I think that's the biggest revelation to me is that once you understand what Bitcoin is, you can't look at money itself in the same way ever again. Mm. And money underpins everything we do in our society from politics to economics to business. And once you realize that the money we're using is potentially flawed, it kind of shifts your whole view of society. <laughs> and that's why I think Bitcoiners might have a tinfoil hat reputation sometimes, uh, but it really is because they've gone to the other side and they can now see on the horizon a better world uh, that can potentially be made by embracing a currency that uh, is scarce, that is finite, that uh, appreciates in value over time as opposed to depreciates like our fiat currency, which has a tendency to inflate over time. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree. I, I think it was the same for me. And also even on my podcast, I, I talked to people who are like master, they have a master's in economics, right? And and they told me, I never learned what money is. And I think once you realize that even those people don't learn and you are participating in a system, right? You're swimming in, in the water, as you said, and you have no no clue how it works. You know, once you realize how it works then you have like this pivotal kind of like decision point right like do i go with this new information and new truth right or observation or do i stay in you know this old paradigm that i don't understand but it's it's easier right i think for many people that has been like the kick down the rabbit hole because as you said like everything eventually you know is downstream from from the money i I say that all the time, like if you identify as a progressive person and you want to fix everything in the world, then you have to realize that everything that you would ever want to fix uh, is broken because the money is broken, because it, it, it breaks incentives and makes people do things that are perhaps not in their own best interest or in the interest of the people that they want to serve. And I think, at least for me, that was one of the biggest, like hard hitting things to realize, right? Like that, no, not everyone has the right incentives to do the right things, although we all talk about it. Yeah, Ron, that, that's so well put. And everything you just described reminded me of the scene from The Matrix when uh, Neo is offered the, the red pill or the blue pill, right? Exactly. And the blue pill is fiat currency, fiat world, you know? Take the blue pill and you can stay in sort of this fantasy land that you've been living in where slowly over time your savings erode, everything gets more expensive, but you just accept reality as it is. But then, of course, there's also the red pillars, like we like to say in the Bitcoin community, the orange pill. And once you take that, you really do see how deep the rabbit hole goes.